Welcome to Power Driven Diesel. We are not talking about the back of UCC engine today. It's just here for you to look at so you focus because we know most of you guys care about mechanical injection. We're about to talk about a common rail engine, so you know, bear with us. There's lots of people who care about common rail stuff. <laughs> okay, let's, let's <laughs> say. We're gonna talk about the fourth gen of Todd's. The fourth gen. The black slash brown, whatever color you want to call it, truck. So if you remember back oh, a month or two ago, we had an, a film or a video about this fourth gen truck I bought. And when it started and it was up- black, right? It's black, but I actually think it's brownish black. I think in some lights it looks brown. I'm not sure, brown or black. I thought it was black until someone told me it's brown. I'm not good at colors. It's the truth. But it's the fourth gen, the only one Only at one the shop. in the shop. We have one here, the fourth gen. And uh, I got it for a great deal, like $8,000. And I wanted to see if we could get a good deal on a truck, would it be, uh, financially good in the end, or would it make me regret it and think I should have just bought a good truck to begin with? Anyway, when the engine started, it had some issues. It knocked just a, a, lot. Little, a lot. Just a little. It was, uh, it was awesome. It was like, I mean, people are, in the video, people have commented left all over the place about how terrible this engine knocked. Todd said it didn't have much of a knock. When I went in the parking lot, I was like, this thing sounds like it's going to come apart. You better fix it before windows the block. And he's no. like, no, it's not bad. It kind of goes away at like 2,500 RPM. It was fine. You could drive it for a good 10 miles. <laughs> it had some problems. So I, when I got the truck, I knew it. And I knew it needed a new engine. But the most important thing you have to do with a truck first is name it. Before you do anything else, you got to name it. So in our last video, I asked for some help on some naming suggestions. And I got a bunch of awesome ones. And I have what I think is a perfect name. Will. You know the name of the truck, but don't reveal it yet. I want your honest opinion. Good name, bad name. I think it's kind of a sissy name, but fourth gens are kind of sissy, so that's okay. Perfect. I'm going to tell you a true story. One time on Comp D, I used, to, I used to spend a lot of time on Comp D. I know you, and I still do some. And uh, there was a guy who was asking for some advice on a truck. He was going to build something. He wanted to look a certain way. And he said, I'm thinking about doing some chrome rims or something. And people just pounded him because at that time, it's all black. Those black wheels were, were like the rage, all black. And so we just pound them on black wheels. And he's had a back pillow. And I told him, you know what I would do if, if it was my truck? Whatever the heck I wanted. And so should you. So just because you think it's a CC name, I don't care. I think it's awesome. <laughs> In truth, it is a little sissy, but it's perfect. Well, I mean, it's better than Bay. It's better than Bay. <laughs> I'll give you that. There's some people that name their truck Bay. I don't, I don't know what it stands for. I hear it's an acronym. Maybe it's short for Babe. We don't really know. It's not our generation. But if you named your truck Bay, you are, well, it's your, it's truck. your truck. You can do whatever you want. Okay, so there's lots, lots of great names from Naki to Odin. We had one guy's really pushing Odin pretty hard. We had all kinds of crazy names out there. But in the first video, I made a joke because I was about done the video and Will walks up and it's the first time you saw the truck. You're like, look at these sweet tires. Look at this tow mirrors. He's doing something silly. And so I said, yeah, shocks, pegs, lucky. That was a, from a video from the Napoleon Dynamite. Look at it. It's got ribs. Real beat locks. Shocks, pegs. Pegs. Lucky. <laughs> lucky. And Lonan jumped right in and he started joking about it. Fourth gen hood? Dude, lucky. you got the wheels? I had to go with, with Tina. My truck's name is going to be Tina, the fat lard llama who needs to eat. Tina. And we're going to feed it. You know, now that I know the backstory, <clears throat> Tina's not that bad. Not so bad. When I first just heard Tina, I was like, sissy. Yeah. Now that I know the backstory, it's okay. That's how it got its name. <laughs> it was from a YouTube commenter pointing out the, the fat lard Tina, eat the food. And every time I think about it, I smile. So that's why my truck's name is Tina. You're going to let her eat. And fourth gens her... are heavier than second gens. They're the so, fat lard, fat lard so Tina. So it is, it is heavy. So. Yeah. So this video... Now we're going to talk about, we knew we had some engine problems and we knew we we're going to take it out and do some stuff. When I first bought the truck, I wasn't anticipating going crazy, but then we got a, co a phone call. Zach Hamilton called and said, hey guys, I got some brand new 6.7 pistons I want to test. And we're like, great, we're getting ready for UCC. And Zach's like, and I want to test them on a common rail. And Todd and I are like, great, we don't really work on a lot of common rails. Little, more and more, but not our specialty. But it's still yet. not our specialty yet, yeah. you know. So, and 
I have the new warhead for the Common Rail. Common Rail warhead. Zach had a new, com a new warhead. He had a new lightweight 6.7 crank he wanted tested. So we've got new pistons, new head. Um, kind of want crank. to see the limits on the crank. We want to see the limits on that because it's got a Hamilton uh, OEM replacement block yep. on it. Yep. That has 14 millimeter hardware from the factory. It's got cam bearings throughout. So we can put a steel cam in there. So kind of became interesting. The problem was, is we are getting ready for UCC. We're like, dude, we don't have time for this. He's like, it's all right. I'm going to send up a guy to help you out. So he sends up Clint. Clint's a cool guy. Clint, we don't even realize at first, Clint's last name is Hamilton, a.k.a. Oh. Zach's brother. So Zach sent a spy to really check on our operation. But anyway, no, Clint, Clint was, was pretty super cool. cool. Clint really was super cool. cool. All right, so Clint got here, and him and Jameson went to town on Tina ripping out the engine. They were very fast, getting the bumper off, getting everything out of the way. He got in there, and that engine was out really fast. And I think Clint had, what, three days is all he had here? Yeah. So the then, goal was rip the engine out, get all the parts off it, and get a new engine thrown together as quick as possible. Clint and Jameson go to town and they pull off the valve cover, check out the valve train, that looks pretty good. Um, don't see any problems there. After they do that, they pull the pan off. Kind of glance at the bottom end. That looks pretty good at, at first glance. So then uh, they pull the head off. Man, five and six is not healthy. Yeah, look at this one. And flip the block over, and they pull the mains. None of the main bearings are spun, which is funny because we're thinking maybe a main bearing was causing, causing the noise. No, so next, right onto the rods. They pull all the rod caps off. None of the rod bearings are spun. We're like, where the heck is this rod knot coming from? It's imaginary. <laughs> <laughs> so as they dig deeper and deeper, finally they come across, what, number five piston, I think it was. Yeah and the small end of bushing had seized to the piston pin and it was all blued the end of the uh, the end of the rod was all blued and discolored and uh, that bushing was spinning and it had a bunch of clearance and that's why it was knocking and it's a part that's supposed to be stationary the the oil's supposed to keep the pin and the bushing moving freely and instead yeah. they had seized and we checked the hardness on the rod it, the rod was actually fine it wasn't like a factory defect it literally had to have just gotten too hot to where all that clearance had closed up and it, it had seized on there. So you can't hot rod your truck forever without paying the consequences. This truck lasted- 330,000 miles. 330,000, so I, I mean, that is kind of Pretty a lifetime for, you know, for an 18 to 20 year old kid hot rodding their truck. I mean, yeah. that's like five trucks, so. Yeah, and we did notice the engine had gotten really hot. Uh, all the gaskets were just, just baked like they're brittle. They weren't, they were just nasty for, for that old of an engine. It shouldn't have been that bad. And did have a blown head gasket too. Yep. So that could have contributed. Maybe they drove it with a blown head gasket long enough. It got hot enough that it, yeah. it got hurt that way too. We don't really know all the history. All we know is uh, Todd bought it cheap and uh, it's going to need new engines. It's going to need new engines. So let's get after it. Now that the engine is out, we got it apart. It's time to rebuild it. And so that's what we're going to do in the next episode. We're going to get a bunch of footage on what we're going to do. We're going to put in the 6.7 lightweight crank. If you saw that parts bin episode, I did a parts bin on these new pistons from Hamilton. Those are going in the engine. New head studs? New head studs, you're gonna wanna see that. You're gonna wanna see these awesome, awesome tool steel head studs too. Very They're excited cool. about those. Also, that new warhead's going on there, and we got some pretty amazing flow numbers for that head. Yeah, that flow, it's incredible. Even with the stock valve and the intake shelf on, I was amazed at the numbers, so. Yeah, so all that's gonna come, so next time, we're going to get the video of the rebuild, so make sure to stick around and watch that. So that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Thanks. Tune in. Subscribe. Like us. Comment. Tell us what we did wrong. Tell us what we could do better. And give us ideas for the next video. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks.